Welcome to the Sport Arena, our weekly show where we bring you highlights of the weekend sporting activities in Namibia and abroad. My name is Helga Schutz and in today's show we'll uh, mostly have soccer news but there's also a bit of cricket and boxing news. Well let's start off with cricket and Wanderers made a clean sweep of the local titles when they won their Premier League T20 title on Sunday after beating Vintuk High School Old Boys by seven runs in the final. Now Natalia Naoyoma of Cricket Namibia sent us this interview with Wanderers' captain Nicolas Skoltz. So let's take a look. Yeah, I mean it was three games yesterday already. Um, so I mean we actually know it's like day two on a pitch. Um, so we try to bat first, utilize whatever um, there was to take away. Um, yeah, we a little bit below par I think. Um, lost a few crucial wickets at crucial times. Um, it was at a stage where we lost like a, a wicket every over for like two or three overs. So um, yeah, that's a bit disappointing, but um, yeah, how the guys came back and how they bowled and fielded it and yeah, it just shows the character of the guys. And I mean, it was really difficult in the end. You, you, you could see the ball wasn't going anywhere. Yeah, so Wanderers has shown really uh, so much, uh, you know, uh, on field, uh, positive performance on field, uh, considering both uh, you know, 50 overs and T20. So uh, next season, um, do you think you can still take uh, the cup? Yeah, we never take it for granted. Um, I mean, same with the last few seasons as well. But um, I think the processes that the whole club is going through, especially with the coach, um, I mean, what we're doing behind the scenes on, on practices, um, the amount of effort that he puts in and that the, the, all the players is buying into that. So yeah, hats off to all the guys buying in and um, I mean, the results is just showing on the field. Moving on to football, and African Stars remain 12 points ahead of the chasing pack after beating Civic to 1-0 on Friday, and then surprisingly drawing 0-0 to bottom of the log Citizens on Sunday. Well, after Friday's match against Civics, I spoke to Civics midfielder Quinton Kurusep and African Stars striker Janja Maharero. Let's hear what they had to say. Um, the game was a bit tough, not the result that we wanted, but we fought hard. Unlucky they're conceding uh, from the corner, just a loose guy running in and heading the ball in. But we tried hard, we fight, just to go back to the drawing board and come back strong on Sunday. So how do you feel about your lock position, Quentin? Uh, it's not where we want to be, uh, but it's still early days, still a lot of points to play for. Uh, we won't uh, drop our heads, we'll, we'll keep on working, we'll keep on working to, to get high up the table. Uh, we still have a lot of uh, games at home as well, so we'll fight, it's not where we want to be. And we are working actively to, 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 to better our position on the log. Great, good luck. We also have Janja Mairero of African Stars, so how was the game for you? It was a very good game, very good game, I just came off the bench to come help the team keep the ball. And those are the instructions I got from my coach. Uh, for us, we got the result. Then we went to the end of the day, it's all about the three points. So we take the three points and we keep on pushing. Right, Janja, and as you mentioned, you came off the bench. Yeah. So tell me a bit about the competition for places in this African Stars team. It's, it's tough, it's tough, you know. We are working hard, competition is hard. There are a lot of experienced players and the good thing is I'm young, so I'm also learning a lot from them. So I feel like I'll just keep working and wait for my chance. When it comes, I'll take it. And do you think you guys have already won the league or is it not over yet? It's not over yet. We still have to keep working. We still have six, seven games that we have to push in order for us to guarantee the league. So we just have to keep working. We're still on soccer news and in another Deb Marine Namibia Premiership match on Saturday, Tigers and Julino Sporting played out to a one-all draw. Well, I spoke to the opposing coaches, James Brits of Tigers and Nelson Lewis of Julino after the game. Let's take a look. Yo, difficult game, uh, to be honest. Um, you know, Julino had a chance in the first few seconds of the game, a clear cut chance. Later, we also had one, also a clear cut chance. And then it was a 50 50. Um, later on, we, we scored the 1 0. At the end of the game, of 60 minutes or something, we didn't defend well. Uh, our defense our line was not good, uh, our zonal marking was not good, and even the man to man part wasn't good as well because we used to, we, we used both, we used the zonal as well as the man to man. So we were just ball watching, um, 
and then you scored the goal. After that, we had to change the formation, we had to change our tactics, and uh, not the way we used to play, uh, because we had to go for long balls now, not our strongest point as well. Uh, and then it led to the, to the draw. Three games, uh, we played three, we have seven points out of nine. Not too bad, but not what we expected. You know, we wanted to, we wanted to go for all three, but unfortunately, we, we didn't get the three points. Okay, thanks, James. Right, with us we also have Nelson Luis, uh, coach of Julinho. So, what do you think of the game? It was a. Uh, we started we started off with the chance that we could have put it away. Actually, ten minutes after that, we had the second chance we could have put away, and uh, we messed up the chances. And you don't take cho you don't take your chances in counts against you eventually. Uh, we we had some difficulties in the, in the beginning of the game, starting of the games, and uh, this time we we held we held them. For, for a while, and then second half when we started, unfortunately, the same thing. The game started again, and we considered an early goal. A little bit of a mistake from from our from our keeper, but then uh, we made a couple of substitutions, attacking substitutions, and, and we started working out. We started put, putting them on the back the back foot, we started attacking them, and pressed and pressed until eventually we got the equalizer. We still tried to get uh, the two one, but unfortunately, we weren't able to get there. Right, but you got a point. But also interesting, uh, Nelson, you got a red card. What was that for? Well, I, I don't really know. Um, I don't think the linesman, if, she didn't even know who, who, was, who was speaking. They must have said something. We didn't hear it from the, from the bench. And uh, she didn't know, even know who it is. She was going to give a, a card to someone else. And he actually owned up and said that it was someone else next to him. And uh, they gave the red card. Well, let's move on to the Southern Stream First Division and Komas Nampol remained on top of the log after collecting maximum points over the weekend. On Saturday, they beat Ramblers 2-0 after goals by Jakubus Fries and Erik Tsum. And on Sunday, they beat Vintuk United 1-0 after a goal by Tsum. Well, after the game on Saturday against Ramblers, I spoke to Erik Tsum of um, Komas Nampol as well as Lebo Muiti of Ramblers. Let's take a look. Uh, the game was tough, as we had, we all experienced it was, it was really tough. It wasn't easy. These guys came in with a game plan, um, which we could not even take. They knocked the ball around. Uh, they knocked the ball around and then they kept the ball. But what, what we did was we, we, just, we just pressured them and that's, that's how we got our goals. Right, Eric, and you're on a hot streak now, another win, it's still on top of the log. How do you feel about your log position? It is, it is a good feeling, but not, it's not yet over. So definitely we are going to work hard so that we can win the, week, uh, win, win the league. Being first does not mean we are, we are already uh, winning the league. Okay, great, good luck. Thank you. With us we also have Lebo Muti of Ramblers, defender. So how was the game, Lebo? It was a tough game. Played against a good opposition. Um, we just unlucky in front. Didn't take our chances. Silly mistakes cost us to concede. But overall, it was a good game. Right, and you guys struggling a bit in the bottom half of the log. So how are you feeling about that? It's quite sad to be down there, bottom log. But uh, we still have a lot of work to do. And um, it's one one game at a time. And hopefully we can improve and get out of the relegation zone. So you think you'll finish in the top half? Hopefully, I have faith in my team. We will get out of the relegation. We're still on football, moving on to women's football now. And in the FNB Women's Super League, girls and goals remained on top of the log despite suffering their first defeat of the season, going down 1 0 to Tura Magic on Sunday. While Tura Magic also beat Komas Nampol 1 0 on Saturday. And after that match, I spoke to um, Emma Naris, defender of uh, Tura Magic, as well as Lydia Kashita of um, Komas Nampol. Let's take a look. Uh, it was a really tough game and we managed to get the three points and we are really happy that we played against them because they are one of the toughest opponents in the, in the league. So hopefully we'll meet again in the second leg. Right. Emma, and um, your season so far, you um, about fourth or fifth on the log last I looked. So how do you feel about your start to the season? 
Um, about the start of the season, we are not yet there, but since we started, we are seventh on the lock, but we have still games in hand, and with time, we'll be there where we are supposed to be. And you are the defending champ, so do you think you can retain the title? Uh, we are the defending champions, but uh, it's still 50-50, it's still early in the league, so we don't know what can happen, anything can happen. Okay, well, good luck. Thank you. Right, and we also have Lily Kashita, right back of Kumas Nampo. How was the game for you? Yeah, the game was not easy. It was quite a tough game. Since, um, this is also one of the toughest teams in the league. As she said, both of our teams are tough. And it was not easy, but yeah, we, and unfortunately we lost 1-0. Right, and uh, how does your, um, what are your aims for the season? Do you think you can maybe be amongst the winners at the end? Yes, yes, definitely. I have a belief in my team and I think we can pull through the win. Just aiming to win the league. Yes, the aim is to, to win the league. Moving on to futsal news and the Express Credit Men's Premier League is still undecided after the leaders Patriots lost 6-4 to the X-Men on Friday. That now gives a chance for second placed quality futsal club to win the league when they play their final match next weekend. Well, after Friday's match, I spoke to Rolando Swartz of the X-Men and Treasure Kawa Pirura of um, Patriots. Let's hear what they had to say. Um, it was it was a really tough game um, competing to a team that's been on the top of the log for the, quite a while of the season. Um, they are very competitive. They have really strong points in playing futsal. It's not their first time in the futsal, but uh, they are a really competitive team. And um, it's actually for us, it's like a, basically like a revenge. So we just came back, uh, gave our all, um, like the futsal. It's a... It's a 50-50. Once off, if you go with, full, with your full heart in it, perhaps you can come with good results. And today we were the fortunate team that came out with the win. Uh, but uh, once you said it was a very competitive game once again. And um, good luck to Patriots um, in winning this. Uh, if quality doesn't make it, but it was really it was a nice game for from our side as X-Men. Thank you very much Great. for having us. Thanks, Ronaldo. And we've also got Treasure Kawa Pirua of um, Patriots. Uh, how was the game for you, Treasure? Yeah, as you can see, I'm very exhausted. It was a nice game. We just started off badly, but we picked up at the end of the game. We had the best men win. x men came back for the events, like we say. We've been beating them the whole season. We've been on top for the whole season. And everyone is to beat us. You know, being on top is not easy, you know. Everyone is competing against you. The push is high. Well done to x men As we can see, our hopes are with quality. If they, if they draw or lose, they stand a chance. Yep. Right, you, right, you. If you had won today, you would have won the league, but now it's up to quality. So, um, you're hoping to win the title soon? Oh, I hope giving, giving hopes to someone, or getting, giving hopes to someone, it's not good. Depends on quality, do. We gave our best. It's the end of the season, it has come to this. It's what football is. Yeah. Right. Treasure, and we of course know you as a former African Stars player. Now you're playing futsal. So, how is this futsal for you? This is very beautiful. Something else, you know, retirement, enjoying myself, coming on my easy days of football, you know. But I would love for this futsal to grow into a, into a better sport. As it is, there are only eight, eight countries in Africa with the eight. And if, if we play it for World Cup, we can always qualify. So, yeah. Moving on to boxing and the MTC Salute Boxing Academy on Thursday announced a boxing bonanza that they will host on the 1st of April at the Roman Catholic Hall in Vintuk. Frederick Hingiolwa of the MTC Salute Boxing Academy has more. Philemon Dutenyane defending his WBA Africa title for the second time. He will be up against Tio Nyayipi. From South Africa, Philip Mutanyane got an impressive record of 15 fights, 10 wins, and one draw. While his opponent, Tio Nyayipi from Zanzi, has got 12 fights, 3 wins, and one loss. The supporting bouts we see Jonas Erastus, Shorty, as well as um, Abed Shikongo will be defending their national titles for the second time as well. Our Pro Hill Sons of Salute Boxing Academy, like 
Nathan Kapololo, and C is here. Join us, the brave heart Mateus, the veteran, will also exchange vows on the night. Um, we, we are calling upon the Namibian nation to come and support us. Because really, boxing, if it's not supported, boxing is on the brink of dying. So the business community and the Namibian community needs to come on board really and support. It's one of the love sports in Namibia and it needs support from all corners. And finally, let's take a look at some of the main international sporting highlights of the weekend with photos courtesy of AFP. Arsenal moved five points clear at the top of the English Premier League with a 3-0 win at Fulham, while Casemiro was sent off as Manchester United were held to a 0-0 draw by Southampton on Sunday. First half goals by Gabriel Magailas, Gabriel Martinelli and Martin Odegaard put Arsenal on course for a fifth consecutive league win. They are now five points ahead of Manchester City, who beat Crystal Palace 1-0 through a penalty by Erling Haaland. Ireland remained on course for a Six Nations Rugby Grand Slam after beating Scotland 22-7 at Murrayfield on Sunday. Johnny Sexton's seven points with the boot took him level with Ronan O'Gara as the all-time top scorer in the Six Nations, while Mac Hansen, James Lowe and Jack Conan scored tries as Scotland were denied a first Triple Crown since 1990. England, meanwhile, suffered their heaviest home defeat of all time when they were thrashed 53-10 by France at Twickenham on Saturday. An utterly dominant France ended their 18-year wait for a Six Nations success at Twickenham in style by running in seven tries to end any lingering hopes of an England title triumph. Well, that brings us to the end of today's show. I hope you enjoy it. Have a productive week. And from me, Helga, it's goodbye till next time.